Hey everybody, welcome back to Kick Punched. As always, please like, comment, subscribe. This is the uh, next iteration of this project where we're going to continue to detail out this Casey Neistat character. This is where we ended off. I think we're going to come in here and refine some of his shirt detailing, get his collar going, and then maybe kind of extend a little seam down the middle of his shirt, add some buttons. And then we're going to wrap it up by getting the shoes modeled out. So that's the goal for today. It's probably going to be a bit of a longer video. We have a long ways to go. so. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is change my, uh, my focal distance to 24 so we can get a little more perspective on this guy. And we're going to dive right in. So let's get in here to the collar area. And I'm going to switch over to the snake hook brush. Skip this. And continue to kind of refine this because we're going to do our uh, collar extract out of this guy. And it's probably going to be buttoned up because he's a. Uh, Gonna dress proper. Gonna run a, let's see what we got here. Oh, so we haven't run a Dynamesh on this yet. And I think we're ready to do so. So let's come over here to Dynamesh and turn it up to 400 and hit Dynamesh. That's too low, so we're gonna double that, more than double, uh, to 900 and hit Dynamesh on that. So, so we're not seeing some of the weird stretching. Maybe we'll crank it even higher. 1400, that's probably good. Cool. All right, let's, uh, let's start masking out by holding control using our mask pen. We're just gonna start masking out the outline of that collar. Going all the way around. Oops. Let's come down right here, right here, and then along the top. I'm gonna try this fun little feature that they've added in the newest, newer versions. Or we can just fill this hole with, let's see. If you come over here to masking, and click on this button, auto region. Oh, it didn't work, Never mind. So we're gonna have to go in, scale up our, our draw size, hold control, and just kind of paint in and fill that in so we can extract that out. It's kind of lame. It might be because my mask pen wasn't, uh, had some little areas that weren't dense enough or whatever, so. <clears throat> Just coming in and filling this guy in. Okay. And I'm going to do a fun thing. I'm going to, uh, let's do a control left click tap inside the mask. It's going to blur that mask. And then control alt left click is going to sharpen that back up. So it's going to kind of clean up some of our wobbliness. And now what I'm going to do is do a mesh extract. And it's okay that we got some of the inside there. We'll just get rid of that. Uh, go to extract. Let's turn the thickness down to like 0 0.005 or 6 and hit extract. And then we'll just hit accept on that. Okay. Clear the mask and come over here to actually let's just hold control shift and then left click on these poly groups here. And then control shift left click drag and invert and just kind of get rid of the uh, the inner stuff there. Make sure we got it all. Come down here just to be safe. We'll turn on double sided. Oh, look, we missed that part. So glad we did that. And then we'll come back to geometry and go down to modify topology and delete hidden. So there's nothing else in there. And it's obviously still looking a little bit wobbly. So let's continue to clean up the color here. And let's uh, let's pull it to, to you know a little bit closer in so he didn't have that top button too uh, uh, undone. Let's do up that top button. Let's do a read Dynamesh. We'll up the resolution to a thousand something and hit Dynamesh. And I'm gonna turn on polish for this one. We'll see what it does. It's gonna sharpen out those edges a little for us. And add some points. Get some sharp points on that color. I think that's the style. I mean, I don't know. I'm the last person to ask for what the style is, but we'll, uh, we'll go with it. Turn off solo mode so we can see how it's looking and uh, get it better into place. I'm gonna move over to my move topological brush so we're not affecting that other side. Turn off my 
poly frame and see how it's looking. Okay. So it's looking good, pretty happy with that. Um, and now I think let's, uh, let's just draw out our, our tie. It's just a long kind of slender tie that we're going to do. So uh, we, I, I've now alt left clicked over to the shirt, shirt geometry. And then I'm holding control with the mask pen. And I'm just going to like draw this pen or this tie just a little bit below the collar. And then uh, kind of like a triangle, upside down triangle. And then come all the way down. I think in the reference it's got a flat bottom tie, which is kind of interesting, but I think I'm going to stick with a traditional pointed kind of tie. I'm going to hold Control Alt, left click tap to sharpen my mask. Actually, let's blur it first a little bit and then sharpen it. Make sure it's all filled in. Sharpen up our points a little. And then I'm going to come over to Subtool, and you guessed it, we're going to do an extract. So 0 0.006 is fine. Hit extract. Hit accept. Okay, cool. Uh, clear your mask. I do some smoothing on that guy. Let's come over here to Dynamesh and get this guy in Dynamesh territory. And then we'll run a polish as well on him. And uh, Okay, I'm gonna come over to the inflate brush and inflate out that knot a little bit, give it some thickness, and then redynamesh. And then I'm gonna go to clay buildup and kind of add this little uh, crease right here. Make it look like it's a. Uh, then I'm smoothing the top edge, rerunning that. Uh, we need more resolution on this guy. Let's drop, crank it to 2300. And then using the Damien standard, I'm, I'm kind of a stickler with my tie details. I wore, I've worn a lot of ties in my day, and uh, I know what I like. So we've got to be able to have enough surface area right here to get a little bit of a dimple in that tie. Absolutely have to have a dimple in your tie. It's the it's the law. So we'll carve that guy in with the Damien standard and rerun a uh, Dynamesh there. And it's such a skinny tie; it's not a huge deal. And that detail probably isn't going to come through in the print very well, but oh well. All right, cool. So now I'll turn on solo mode and let's move that tie up into place using the snake hook. Just going to scale it with our draw size and push that right into place. Kind of like the skinny tie. What do you think? Okay, we've got that in place, kind of center that a little. <clears throat> Maybe have that kind of flip out just a little bit from under his suit. All right, cool. And let's go through and add some buttons here. And you're probably thinking, oh man, I don't want to make buttons. That sounds terrible. Well, guess what? ZBrush has some pretty cool stock buttons. If you go to the brushes, come over here to uh, in IMM parts and click on that guy. And you can add a button just by clicking and dragging, just like so. I actually kind of like these, they're a little bit stylized. I'd probably make it bigger uh, than you would anticipate, just so it comes through and uh, when, once it's printed. And I'm gonna inflate the size out just a little bit too, give it some thickness. No, it's probably too much. Whoops. Just hit one right there and see what that does. Maybe one again. All right, so let's add another one right here. Try to keep it about the same size or it's going to look weird. Oops. Two. Cool. So now we can get some buttons. And it might be a little bit small. So let's scale the size up just a little using our transform tool. Awesome, so it's a two button suit, which is fine, fine by me. My kids are just having so much fun right now. Getting close to the holidays here, we got like three days left. I'm gonna recarve in the seam using the Damien standard just to make sure that that's present. And then I think uh, he's gonna have some like pockets. So let's mask those, let's paint those out. 
those on a little bit of an angle, just give them a tiny bit of an angle. And then this guy here, Okay, let's come back over here and do the same old, same old. We will uh, do a mesh extract, drop it down to 0 0.04 extract, and then hit accept. And now we've got some interesting little pockets. Going to smooth those edges out a little bit, just a broad smooth. <coughs> and uh, Dynamesh on them, drop or crank it to 800, and then make sure polish is on. And we now have some pockets in the suit good cool it's looking better all right so now I think the next thing um, hey, sunglasses look real big don't they let's try and scale those in just a little this is me getting sidetracked it's a little bit because they're just they're too too big I used to make these sunglasses back in the 90s these giant like pink rimmed sunglasses that you could get at like the dollar store kind of what they were looking like. All right, cool. All right, gonna hit save. In fact, I'm probably gonna version up my file to be safe. Always version up, kids. And let's start cranking out some shoes. And the nice thing about the shoe is we're just gonna have to make one of these and then we can just duplicate it over. So what I'm gonna do to start with is I'm just gonna mask the shoe area just using the mask pen. I'm gonna drag like that, like so, and um, kind of paint down, right? You know, it kind of drops down, give it a better shoe shape. It's actually, let's first look at the types of shoes we should be going for, look at our reference. Let's see what kind of shoes this guy uses. So it looks like he's always using kind of like a high top skate shoe. So we'll, we'll try and achieve these exact shoes. Yep. yep, that's the shoe we're going for. Okay, so we'll do a high top. Glad we looked so we can get this right. So let's come up higher. <laughs> Shoes are, you know, they're, they're always a tricky thing to make. So this is probably going to take the bulk of the video to make these guys. They're always fairly highly detailed. They got a lot of complex modeling in there, but the thing is if if you can model a shoe, you can pretty much model anything, I feel like. You can do it well. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is, now that we've got that mask, we're gonna come over to Subtool and do another extract. Uh, we'll leave it at 0 .004 for now, hit accept. And now we've got a shoe, yay! Looks so perfect. Oh, man, look at that shoe. All right, so what I'm gonna do is actually Let's do this. Let's just grab the outer parts, the outside shell, for now. These toes. And we'll get rid of the in inside stuff for now. We don't need that. So we're just gonna go to Modify Topology and go to Delete Hidden. So now there's no more inside shell for that guy. We're gonna run a Dynamesh. We'll keep it semi-low res for now, like a thousand hit Dynamesh on that guy. And um, get rid of these toes, just holding Smith to, er, Holding smooth, drawing a broad smooth across those toes, and kind of getting that more into shoe shape. Again, look at your reference. I'm gonna do an inflate. In fact, we should probably have done use the slider. Uh, that probably would have been the better approach, just to get things in shape or all inflated out like uniformly outside of the foot, but this is fine too. Okay, so we're making the tongue of the shoe now at this point. And uh, I'm gonna clean up my poly groups just a little bit, so I'm gonna control shift left click tap on the purple, and then the yellow, and then these guys. 
and I'm just gonna make this all one poly group for now. And then I'm gonna invert my selection by control, control shift left click dragging, like so. And then just make that a poly group. And then I'm gonna come over here to um, edge loops and run a group loops on that just to try and smooth that out just a little bit. Cause eventually it's gonna save us some time just to have that a little bit cleaner on that edge up there. Okay. And turn on solo mode. Let's make sure that none of the, the toes are poking through. Scale this up and smooth some more. Okay. <clears throat> that guy's stick. So uh, I'm gonna all over to the pants and just kind of push those back into place to get, get that out of the way, that little cuff. Same with this guy, get this out of the way, so let me mirror that over. Check that a little more snug around the leg. And then come back over to the shoe. Okay, and then, um, let's see here, I'm gonna hit save. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the uh, sole of the shoe. And so we're going to do a combination of Dynamesh and like a, a clean uh, topological workflow. So what I'm going to start with is we need to get a flat bottom on the shoe. And so I'm going to try and flat it the best I can using the snake hook, get a little bit flatter. Um, but I'm not going to nitpick on that. I'm just going to hold control shift and then come over here to my select tools. And if you look over here at all these fancy tools, we have these interesting like Knife curves, uh, slice curves, we're gonna try this one, the knife knife curve. And before you run this, make sure that you save because this, this tool, although it's powerful, it crashes frequently. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is hold control shift and you notice that the knife curve over here is my now my active tool. I'm gonna control shift, left click, and then drag a line along the bottom of the foot. And you'll see that it slices that for me. I'm gonna come up a little bit higher this time. So I'm gonna undo that and come back up and then slice it again, okay? And I'm going to drop my shoe to the bottom of the stack, hold shift, left click on the arrow, and then I'm gonna duplicate this subtool. Control shift, left click on that blue area, and then I'm gonna get rid of everything else. So I just hit delete hidden on that guy, and then we're gonna run a Z remesh on this. Drop it to two in the target poly count and just hit Z remesh and see what that does. So this has now given us a clean topology, like if you shift snap to the profile view, you're not gonna see it uh, if you're in orthographic view. Let's go, come down here and turn on uh, double-sided so we can see both sides. And now we see what's going on. We can have, um, we can do an easy extrude. I don't like the shape of this quite yet, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna find the shape, snapping to the bottom view and just try to keep this shoe on a, on a flat plane as you're making these adjustments. And ideally we should have done this to the original shape before running like our Z remesh and our extract and everything. We just should have just polished this before, but it's okay. We'll get other things in line too. Um, okay, cool. So now we need to give this some thickness, right? So what we're gonna do is come over to the Z modeler. We're gonna mouse over one of those faces and make sure that extrude is on and poly group all is the target, okay? So now mousing over one of those faces we're going to click and drag, left click and drag, and pull down, and that's gonna give us our thickness. And the reason we I tried to have us keep it super flat on that plane is because sometimes that can break pretty easily when you're doing that extrude. And I went a little bit too thick, so I'm gonna undo. Try again, not so thick. Okay. And then I wanna add my, my creasing edge loops, so I'm gonna mouse over that edge, go to insert a single loop, and then I'm gonna click and drag a loop there and go back to solo mode, hit control D to see how that's looking, hit shift D to go back. So we're, we're let's add a few more loops here. So let's undo our subdivision and, and add a few more loops just right here and right here. And then hit control D and that's, that's how we're looking now. So I like this resolution, so I'm gonna come over here to geometry and to delete my lower subdivision level because we're not really worried about things being too, too hefty. And then I'm going to come over to deformation and maybe do a little bit of an inflate to kind of get that 
uh, expanded a little bit and we're getting closer into his shoe territory now at this point which is pretty cool I think I'm going to simplify, simplify the, the the laces I'm not going to do like the crisscross laces I'm just going to do some that go straight across just to make that easier and um, I think I want to add some thickness to the bottom of the shoe so I'm going to make sure I'm in uh, orthographic view and then click left click and drag a rectangle along the bottom of the foot I'm going to control left click tap and blur that a little invert the selection and then get my little gizmo in place and drag that down and I'm going to alt left click on the shoe sole, the sole of the shoe and then bring that down so now we have a little bit more thickness on that, that uh, bottom part alright cool so now let's get that back into place Gonna try and line that up a little bit better with the sole. Redynameshing. I think we're out of Dynamesh mode. Turn it back on. Dynamesh. And then get back to smoothing and getting that stuff kind of lined up a little bit better. Okay, get the heel scooched in a little. And then alt left click to his heel, clear my mask, and get that back into place back over to the shoe all right awesome okay these are looking good so I'm gonna come up here to save <clears throat> and now I'm gonna to try to extract the tongue of the shoe and kind of get that into 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 its uh, own sub tool so I'm gonna mask that area just kind of paint the tongue area for now. And we'll look at the reference real quick again just to make sure we're doing the right things. I want to, I want to see if he has like a toe cap. Okay, these have got to be the same shoes. So, all right, he doesn't have like a toe cap going across. He's got the tongue back behind there and these, okay, they lace all, okay. So, let's do that. Uh, Let's do a, well, let's come further down the shoe a little bit. Okay, with that all masked out, I'm gonna hit Control W to mask, to polygroup everything within that mask. And then I'm going to duplicate my subtool and then Control Shift left click on that uh, tongue area. And I'm gonna just do a delete and then let's give it some thickness by coming over here to extract and then just do a mesh extract. It's gonna say, do you wanna do the whole thing? And you're gonna say, yes, I do. It's too thick. Let's go down to 0 0.001, try that. Say, okay, just accept that guy, it's fine. We're gonna clean it up and get it into place. Just smoothing and kind of pushing and pulling things and get that in the right spot, so. Clean up this weird edge back here. Let's do a Dynamesh. Pick the resolution to a thousand. Then continue to smooth. Control W. Still just kind of getting this guy in the right shape. Oops. Let's turn off solo mode, see where it fits in the grand scheme of things. And let's uh, let's get that down and into place. Hmm. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do now. Okay, let's do a mesh subtract. That's gonna be fun. Okay, so first things first. Let's save because when you do this procedure, uh, zero sensitivity you crash. So saving. Um, what I'm going to do, and this is a very common workflow in the 3D print workflow, just so you're aware. Uh, let's delete this extra, this extra sub tool that we made. Just get rid of that guy. We don't need it anymore. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to make a subtraction mesh that we can subtract out of the shoe itself. So um, I'm not sure how necessary this is, but it's it's a good teaching point because you're going to use subtraction mesh, boolean meshes a lot in ZBrush, especially if you're doing 3D print stuff. So I'm going to duplicate that sub tool. 
and then making sure that my subtractive mesh is below the mesh that I'm subtracting from always. Click this little button here and make this a, sub a subtraction, a subtractive mesh, and then come down to poly groups. And at the very, towards the bottom, you'll see a group as DynaMesh sub. So click that guy. And then along with that, I'm gonna inflate this guy out like maybe three, two, I said. So two, and so we've got, make sure that this guy's on, it's made a DynaMesh subtractive mesh and we've inflated it out. And then make sure that DynaMesh is, the, is turned on on your shoe, which is good. And then we're going to merge down, merge this guy down. And now we've combined that all together. And now to see that subtract, we're gonna hold control and then left click, drag a mask and let go. So now we have, we've essentially cut that mesh out of that guy. And if we turn on, turn off all sub tools except for those two, we can see that it now kind of fits in there nicely. Um, and we might be getting too crazy with this. I don't think I need to get this crazy for this de detailing. Uh, let's just, uh, Let's just kind of scoops this guy back into place a little bit better. And come back here. I'm gonna up my resolution on my DynaMesh for this quite a bit, up to 1800. And then start smoothing that back. We kind of want to pull these little, uh, um, these little, I don't know what they are, tongues. So I'm gonna go over to my snake hook tool, pull these guys out. I think he might have these things. Maybe he doesn't have these things. You know what? I'm just gonna go for it. So let's just pull these little guys up just a little bit so they're kinda The idea here is just to kind of sink that the tongue of that shoe down into the shoe a little bit, make it look like it's inset into it. So. All right, Coolio. Awesome. Let's get that toe a little bit. Switching over to H polish to kind of pull out this little deal, little indent. Okay, let's turn everything on and see how things are looking. We got the sole of the shoe in there. Um, let's pull this guy up. And then let's start to deform our sole just a little bit because there's, you know, there's a little bit of curvature on those guys. They're not like perfectly flat necessarily. And then back over here, just kind of, you guys are fully witnessing how ADD I am. But uh, we're going to get this done. That's all that matters. It's the most important thing is that we get it done, right? Had a lot of inspiration on lately of how it's more important to finish projects than it is to nitpick on the details. Um, because other people will nitpick those details for you and give you that information for free later on. So it's very important. Just get your stuff out there. Get it done. Just get it done. And then other people can sit there and spend their time nitpicking. But meanwhile, you've moved on and you've gotten the feedback you need to get better. So, all right. Um, so I think that's pretty good for now. Let's turn everything on and see how it's all looking. Turn on perspective. And let's look at our concept and see how I got that looking. So. Looks like his shoes are, you know, his shoes are a little bit bigger. Uh, so maybe I'll, I'll scale those guys up a little bit. So um, let's combine all these little parts together. Coming over here, let's hit Control W on each one. Control W, Control, Control W, and that way we can always split these apart if we need to later on uh, easily. But we're going to merge down right here and just combine all those those together. And then I think I'm going to squash in Y. Just a little bit and then scale up. This little scale can be a little bit finicky. 
see how it kind of wobbles when you're doing it. Okay, so now let's add some shoelaces. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and use a curve tube. Actually, let's use the curve tube snap brush. So what you can do now is if you drag on this guy, it's dragging out the tube and it's actually snapping to the and conforming to the shape of your geometry. So let's take that, let's undo that and then take that all the way up and do our zigzags for our shoelaces. Okay, well, let's get a better angle and try that again. I'm not gonna do too many, I don't wanna get too complicated with this. And you're gonna have to clean it up. Actually, let's do, let's just do one at a time maybe and try that. Hmm. Maybe the best thing is let's do this. Let's duplicate the shoe, come over here, and then we'll run a, a broad dynamesh on all of it. We'll drop a resolution down. So this is gonna be our shoelace drawing shoe. And we're gonna get rid of these creases in this scenario so that those don't make it uh, deform weirdly. And then we're gonna try to draw out our, our, our curves on that guy. So come over here, over here, over here, and then back. Yeah, they keep doing that weird little bend. Eh, a little bit better. Okay, so now I'm just I just left click outside of that right to get rid of the curve. And then I'm gonna draw my other ones. And while that's still the mass one, I'm gonna kinda clean that up a little bit, try to get those into place. We're just gonna have to do some some manual cleanup to get those working. And just keep in mind when you print this, these are gonna be tiny. It's gonna be so small, so don't don't get too crazy with it. I'm gonna clear my mask and switch over to my move topological brush. Clean this guy up. Okay, it's looking a little better. All right, so if I control left, left click uh, tap on that guy and then invert my selection, get the other one too, and then invert my selection, I'm gonna just uh, delete hidden because I don't need that shoe anymore. And we'll just uh, continue to try and clean this guy up, get it into place. Maybe we can sink him. Yeah, sink him underneath that little edge. Can hide all the gross looking stuff underneath that. Okay, we'll zoom out and take a look. Be sure to always be sure to step back and zoom out a little bit. See how things are looking. My kids are losing their minds. I got dogs barking, I got kids freaking out. Okay, so now let's uh, let's go ahead and add our little bunny ears to this guy. Make sure that your draw size, your brush size is roughly the diameter of the, the other ones that we ran. And then we'll just draw a loop here. Oops, actually. So we're using curve tube. There's a difference here between curve tube and curve tube snap. This is designed to snap to the current geometry. And this only snaps at the point where you first click, which actually might be beneficial for us right now. So let's, uh, let's and that a deter, a, it's actually determined by the angle of the camera too, so make sure that you've angled your camera properly, and then just click and drag, and you can see that it only drew on that plane of the camera. So um, this is gonna be helpful for us for now, so let's, no, that's too big. I scaled my size down, so now it doesn't match the other one. Oops, a little smaller. Perfect, okay. And then we'll just do like a little, I don't know, a little bit of a knot here. Try to get that into place using the snake hook. Okay, and then uh, we'll use our move topological on this other guy to kind of get that guy into place. And you know what, I mean, it's too round. Shoelaces have some flatness to them too. So let's come over here with the H polish 
and just try to add some flatness to those. Oops. Okay. And then I'm just going to continue to use the move topological to kind of move that into, into place, move it to the side a little. smaller okay sweet and um, just for kicks I think I am gonna add like a like a little toe cap detail and I'm just gonna use a uh, I'm gonna come over here to uh, mask lasso and then just lasso that that cap and then uh, whoops I forgot we combined that so let's control uh, shift left click tap on the on the red one and then now draw our toe cap and do a uh, uh, extract so come over to extract make sure that it's a little bit smaller like point zero zero four is good and then hit accept on that guy and smooth out those weird wobblies a little and let's turn uh, let's turn everything on actually we need to come back over here to our old old sub tool and then unhide everything make sure everything's visible and then we'll looks like a, it's a little bit too big so um, I'm gonna recenter my pivot on my transform gizmo and then scale that guy in just a little bit okay so I like the toe cap and I like that detail okay so let's merge everything down to the same sub tool clearing our mask here uh, control W, Control W, and then merge down. Okay, now we've got that shoe, and you're wondering, how do I get two shoes? Well, I can come over here to Duplicate, and then down to Deformation, I can go to Mirror on X. Just click that guy, and then we're going to have to, because it's not symmetrical, we're going to have to kind of move it into place. So, like so. All right, great. Okay, so we've got his shoes pretty pretty close. I might continue to refine those and push those as we go along, but uh, for now I'm pretty happy with it. We got the tie and the collar. Um, let's pose his hand so he's doing less of a weird wave. And uh, I've got solo mode on too, so we got no clothes on this this guy. Um, but let's let's just clean up his hand shape a little bit and make it look like he's actually gripping. So what we're gonna use is these different poly groups that are already on those. And if you need to, you can just, if you've lost these poly groups, you can just re-mask and then hit Control W and mask those so you can isolate them. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna mask just his, just his thumb, sh uh, shift, uh, control, control clicking, and then inverting the selection. And then I'm gonna drag the joint into his thumb area and rotate his thumb down. So he's, you know, he's holding on to like, I think it's like a, like a, a GoPro mount type thing, like a, what are those things called? My goodness. I forget, oh, a gorilla pod is what they're called. Yeah, that's right. Um, so we're gonna continue to, I'm gonna mask that top knuckle now, blur my mask, invert selection, and then reposition my joint structure here, and then bend that guy down. I think that's how thumbs bend, right? I'm going to inflate this whole thumb overall and give it some stylizations of thickness. Nice thing is we only have to do one hand. Hands are really hard. I'm a firm believer that if you can do hands well, you can do anything. Hands are just real tricky. Take a lot of practice. And then let's start bending. Let's actually try cheating and bending all of these fingers at the same time and see if we can make that work. So I'm going to control left click mask these guys out and then uh, unhide everything blur my mask invert selection and position my joints you know kind of in the middle as much as possible and I'm going to try to oh, that's not working let's move that up and then rotate them all inward like like that yeah it's kind of kind of worked 
cool. And then um, I think I already mentioned this, but if you control left click along the edge that you want to mask, uh, ZBrush is real smart and it'll kind of follow that. Um, but just make sure you're rotating around and making sure that uh, sometimes these fingers kind of rotate inward a little. I'm using move as well. And then this guy. This is always handy, a little bit laborious, getting fingers posed correctly. Okay, using the move topological because I just I don't want to affect all the other fingers. I want to just move that one around. I think we're going to leave that one finger, the index finger, uh, pointed straight. Okay. Move this guy out. Clean these up a little, the knuckles. Um, I'm gonna do a broad inflate too, so these fingers are kind of touching each other a little bit better. Just inflate those out. Okay. So now he's looking a little bit more like he's holding something and I still don't like that index finger just yet. Let's just the move topological. Get that guy. You know what, let's do it. Let's just, uh, it's real awkward. Let's, let's get that guy working better. And we are getting kind of nitpicky just because that that joint should be right there and okay. it's looking real wonky. Just keep on with this. Okay. It's it's not gonna be as visible, uh, so I'm not I'm not worried about it. Sure that he looks like he's got a grip on something. Let's fix that. Okay. Uh, come back to inflate and inflate these guys out again just a little. Okay, so now he's looking like he's holding something, which is great. And I turn on solo mode. And there's something with his jaw that I'm not liking too, so while we have some time here, I'm just gonna clean up his jaw. His chin area, I should say, just a little. I'm just using H polish, I'm gonna flatten this out. He's got a very distinct chin. I think that's it's one of those things that contributes to his likeness, is just getting that chin nailed, nailed down. Okay, sweet. The other thing too I'm going to add real quickly before we end is just going to add this little zipper area uh, using the uh, mask pen. Actually let's control D, control D, give us some polygons to work with and then we're going to just come right here like so and then make this part real sharp and this part a little bit rounder. And then I'm going to do a, in this case, I think I'm just gonna invert my selection and come over here to inflate and do like a five inflate inflate on that. And then while it's still masked, I'm gonna smooth. Okay. And push with the snake hook brush just a little bit. And then we give it him like a little zipper deal for his pants. Smooth this guy out just a little bit. And Damien Standard to make sure that that is creased all the way down. Okay, 
and just kind of refine some of the wrinkles around this area. Gonna use the Damien Standard, really push those. This is really good for this kind of stuff. Okay. <clears throat> Using some of our. Um, what are they called? What can my brain think right now? Pleats? Pleats. Pleats? I think they're called pleats. Let's get those guys, maybe kind of get those going all the way up right here, like so. Yeah, it's looking better. It's looking more like a suit. All right, cool. Um, yeah, so I think we got some good work done. In the next uh, video, definitely going to focus on getting the camera and the skateboard. And then we'll probably do like a, a little refinement pass on everything because his hair still needs a good amount of work. And I think maybe some proportional type stuff too. Um, like there's some things I still like in the concept. Um, his chin still juts out further. Things are a little more stylized. Like the, the shape of his neck going this way and his head kind of cocked this way. Uh, and he needs some like bushy hair, his curls that are coming out the back. There's a lot of improvements we can do to this right now. But again, we're just, it's very important that we just get stuff done. That's the most important part. So probably needs a watch because he's, I think he's always wearing a watch. Um, um, but next video, we will focus on the camera, the skateboard and the base, and then we'll do a refining pass. And then I'm not sure if I'm going to do the crown yet. Uh, I probably should do the crown. That's the whole point. He's the king of New York, right? So um, I'm not sure about it. Maybe let me know in the comments what you think. Um, and just, yeah, be sure to comment because my comment sections are crazy, you guys. They're, they're the most crazy things you're ever going to experience. Like, hands down. You're going to write about them in your journals, in your diaries, whatever you write in because they are just out of control. So let me know uh, if I should make the crown. Anyway, uh, please like, comment, subscribe, do all the things. Hit the notification bell when I upload new videos. I'm trying to be very consistent. I'm trying to upload two to three times a week and um, I'm really enjoying this, having a lot of fun. So anyway, we'll uh, see you in the next video.